As. This is Levin. I'll I'll spin a I'll spin a yarn to start. I was I'll forget this bloke's name, but anyway, the, the my first mining job ever. I um there was this is like there's like inspiration to get on the jumbo. There was this bloke I worked with, and he was um I was nippering for him, and like I was young, and I'm just looking at this guy on the jumbo, and he's like you know married, couple of kids, he's on the levers, earning a squillion, and I'm just like this is what I want to be. This is the ultimate man. And I thought he's thought he had it all together, like the perfect bloke, and that's what is my inspiration to get on the jumbo. And this bloke, his name was Bud O'Shaughnessy. And I'm talking to this bloke now today about mental health. And it's like, was I wrong? Like, like, is it is it that do you notice these things with people? And you think you can you can picture someone and like then I hear you come to me and say, I'm passionate about mental health now. I've gone through a rough trot. It's like, I, I thought, I didn't know. No, well, back then, Matty, mightn't have been the case either, but, you know, people that are going through a hard time can put on a mask and, and blanket it quite well and hide it. Yeah. Where internally, you know, there's a hurricane going on, but externally they can remain cool and calm. And Yeah. Um, but thanks for the kind words. Yeah, glad uh, glad I was an inspiration. Yeah, there you go. But it was, um, yeah, no, to say like you just it's, it's it is it's you just don't know sometimes, and it's you, you hear it too often. It's um, and then then we got we're on this fantastic boat with the 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 G from GBF Roscoe, and uh, again you're a passionate advocate about mental health, and it's um. And no, no, everyone, it's the stereotypical thing. People are like, how can someone with a flash boat own in a company be either not an advocate about mental health but going through a mental health struggle? Yeah. Obviously yeah, I, the case. Yeah, I certainly think it, uh, just, it just shows, uh, Matty, that um, it can happen to anybody. Yeah. And um, I know, uh, you know back in 2013 when I went through, through my struggle, there were so many people that sort of, think, sort of said to me, well, I didn't think it would happen to you. Uh, and all I could say is it's just proof that it can happen to anybody. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's not about, about um, you know, being weak, strong or, or otherwise. It's, uh, it is exactly what it's, as we say, it's mental health. And it, and it sort of starts here. Yeah. Um, causes you some issues and, yeah, it can, again, it just happens, it can happen to anybody. Well, I don't, we won't do too many introductions. As I said, Roscoe's the G and GBF. Bud is the mine in live mine. That's all you need. That's all you need today. You're going to use it. that? That's pretty oh, good. Yeah, you coined it, but I'll use it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as we, it's not a really a career chat today. It's a, it's a mental health one. Um, and it's, I guess you, you're, a, you're both spearheading a bit of a, no, a bit of an individual campaign to try and make, bring it out the, bring out the, oh, the, Highlight the demons that are within the mining industry, unfortunately. Such a great industry, but people, there's so many people that struggle within it, which is a shame. It's, uh, and and it, do people need to be, that are advocates, do they need to have gone through a struggle themselves, do you think? Um, yeah, I just personally think there's a, you know, a saying that I always had on my wall in my office, and, and that is that there's no substitute for experience. And, um, and certainly, you know, having experienced... Uh, mental health issues and, you know, don't know what you call it, a, did I have a breakdown or did I burn out or whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's just like everything, when you've experienced it, you're so much probably better off for it in, in some ways. Um, even while at the time you think it's, you know, it's the end. Um, but uh, now I sort of sit back and I look at it and in some ways I go, well, shit, I'm glad I had that experience because I understand so much better. Um and that's probably what helps uh, us, like people like myself and Bud, um, you know, be advocates for it because we understand it. I think, um, you know, uh, mining is, is only one industry. This thing, this 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 um, epidemic that's actually out there of, of mental health um, is in is in every industry. But um, you know, because we're close to it as as, as miners, um, there is certainly due to fly and fly out and and. Um, the, the longer hours that we work, the hard work 
uh, the pressure that's on everybody. Um, it certainly makes mining a a uh, a target for this. Uh, as I said, the the condition, I suppose you'd say, it's it's we're, we're all vulnerable to it, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So. Yeah, I I, I agree. Because I just look back at myself, you know, as a, as a manager and look at my internal dialogue that was going on when people were coming to me and saying they had um, different issues, mental issues. And after going through it myself, like my attitude towards it has definitely changed. You know, I was, I know that I was a little bit too judgmental back in the day, but, you know, after going through it, it's, it's no fucking joke. It's, it's real and it can cause people a lot of grief. Because as I said, like, to, so this is 10 years ago, this, this jumbo pro that I magically remembered his name. How lucky is that? But like, where, where were you at then, bud? Did you ever think like you were going to go down that? You were like high flying on the jumbo. Uh, like, yeah, as I, as I said, from my perspective, looking at you, like, this is the ultimate. This yep. is where your life wants to be. Yeah. Did you think you were like absolutely not a chance of going through something like that? Like where, where did your struggles begin? It didn't cross my mind. So it didn't cross my mind at all. But like Roscoe said, it can happen to, it can happen to anybody. Um, the people, since I've started talking about it, and and it's not easy to talk about, right? So the message is like we, we need to talk about it. And even sitting here today, it's still not easy to talk about. And it was actually Roscoe who, who taught me how to talk about it when, when I, you know, he reached out to me when I was sort of going through a, what I call a breakthrough because um, I learnt so much about myself in that time. I learnt about how my mind works, how my body works. I learnt where that line in the sand actually is and that, you, that you don't want to cross. And I learnt since then, I've, you know, I've filled my toolbox with, with tools that to stop me from getting that far again. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it can happen to anybody. Well, I'll say we'll give a brief bit of context. Like you've uh, you've gone jumbo to form and project manager now, uh, entrepreneur. Where, what stage? What stage was this? Did this happen, or this start to you started to unravel a bit? Yeah, it was so. It was early on in my um, pro- project manager career that that it started to unravel. I know. So through an uncir- unfortunate um, set of circumstances. I really just noticed that um, things have started to change in my mind. I noticed that I couldn't retain information, therefore I couldn't recall information, and that's worrying. Um, and I just kept pushing it down. So like a typical Aussie male, I just kept pushing it down, pushing it down, not taking any notice of it um, until it manifested itself in ways, like in physical ways that I couldn't ignore because it started to affect my whole life, my family life. Everything could start to affect my whole life, and um, so then then I had to take notice and start to do something about it. But I actually left it too late. I, I just kept pushing it down, and I just kept going and going as we do. We just we just struggle through. Um, but you know, from that point, it took me to um, look at myself introspectively and <clears throat> realize that the way I was feeling was actually my fault. Like there was nobody that was going to help me, but but myself, and. Um, you know, having having the strength to do that is has changed my life. What What about you, Roscoe? Where, like I said, brief bit of context. You've you, or you've come from air leg miner to be a to be a, a one letter in GBF. Um, oh. uh, from what and what from what Stan Gilman said, ups downs, ev- everything's been thrown your way. Where Where's two thousand and thirteen sit in that journey? Where we at? Yeah, well, like uh, like, uh, like we all say, I think we think we're invincible. Um, um, you know, I'm sort of, a, I still am, but I was probably more so then a very driven person. Um, um, yeah, never let anything get in my way. And um, yeah, favourite song is uh, when I get, when you get knocked down, get up again. You're never going to keep me down. Yeah. Sort of scenario. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I could never say no to anything. Um, that's something that uh, yeah, you need to sort of. Learn that you can't take on everything, and you as in like it. business opportunities, business and, opportunities, yeah, and, and yeah. Work, working hard. Uh, you know, we all just try to take on probably too much, and and that's just a life thing. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, I, I say always driven, and I you know you you want more for for whatever reason. Um, you know, yeah, I'm not sure that um, you know. I found in the middle of some of the stuff that, uh, you know, I came up with the word greed that I never thought I'd be 
sort of it's not it's not in my nature, not what I'm about. But um, at times when you look back and say, well, why the hell did I do all of that? Um, you know, was it was it sort of greed? Did you want too much? Um, do you expect too much of yourself? And um, yeah, there's there's certainly a, a line there that um, that you know, and different people can probably handle different pressures. Um, but I think even today, uh, you um, you see some of these people that are that are you know having issue uh, issues are high flying people that um, again, people went well shit you know how could they be in that position? Uh, you know, they've got all the money, they've got all the you know, they've got the, the the family support, they've got um, you know everything that opens and shuts. But but it's but it's not about that. Yeah, it's about it's, as a, as you know, we sort of say it's a it's about your mind and it's, it's all it is all a, it's a mind game that um, that it's a matter of I suppose when it trips out. Um, well, that's what I found anyway. I think um, I think myself. I just you know I drove myself and I couldn't say no to anything and I you know um, you know I was. 27 years old, and I had 100 people working for me, and then went and bought a pub, and I uh, down the hope town, and and um, yeah, you know, it is a bit of a spin out when I look at it now, and I've got sons of my own that are that are around 30 or, uh, um, but but yeah, uh, and then sort of what happens, well, what happened to me anyway, and it's, I say there's everyone is a bit different, um, I suppose, but but um, and I drove myself um, in a way, and I had. People like Stan, that you know, good good mates of mine that have that have, um, that have been been mates of mine for years that um, would sort of say to me, "What are you doing? You know, like um, what are you doing? You know, how the hell can you handle this, this, and this?" And of course, you get um, a bit bulletproof, and you think, "Hey, I can I can handle this." Um, but um, there's a bit of a saying as well, you know, when you've got a when you've got a boat with uh, you know, twelve holes in it and you've only got ten fingers to um, to plug them with, uh, you're in a bit of trouble. And I think it sort of a lot of people get to that um, stage again without knowing. Um, you know, myself just having too much on the plate, and then you know, GFCs hit, and uh, you know, issues come about from a business perspective that uh, that cause you pressures that you that you're trying to trying to fix, and you're trying to um, you know work your way through. And as I said, you just haven't got enough enough fingers to full to put in the holes that are there. Um, then you know, then uh, the pressure comes on, and you um, you know, and you, you make a few calls that um, may be wrong. You know, make a couple of decisions that that become bad decisions, uh, and then you sort of start to to doubt yourself. Um, in, in my position, because I had so many things on the go, um, you know, my phone would ring all day, every day, and and most of the time it was I had to make a, a call, make a decision on that call. Yeah. Are we going left? Are we going right? Are we doing this? Yeah. Are we doing that? So it was just going bang, bang, bang all day long of decision, decision, decision. You start making a few wrong ones. Um, that pressure comes back on you, and, and, and you, then you might see it start affecting other people as well. Then you go, holy shit, you know, um, you start doubting yourself, um, and that, that can sort of cause you into a bit of a spiral that uh, is towards negativity rather than positiveness. And um, as I said, I've always been a positive person and I think that positiveness is what drives you but um, you do need a balance sometimes you do need to to learn to say no and and, and not take things on but uh, yeah for me I got to a point that um, uh, yeah as much as it is I'll admit it you know like uh, you know, people would ask me a question I'd, I'd be be hiding to because I didn't want to give an answer you know I'd be, and mainly because I was scared that I was going to give the wrong answer Um and and then that starts playing with your mind. Um, you start uh, you start losing sleep over it. Um, you know you start worrying about things that you shouldn't be worrying about. Um, yeah, for me, for me, yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't sleep. And and then when I I couldn't sleep, um, I was laying in bed thinking stuff that that your mind shouldn't be thinking. Um, you know, to an extent that uh, you know my wife's uh, laying beside me in bed, and um, shit. Yeah, funny how things come back to you. Um, but but um, yeah, and you sort of yeah had times where you'd be had your head in the pillow, you know, screaming into the pillow because your your mind's playing games with you, and you you just um, yeah you're screaming out for help, but you either don't you know you think you're too too strong and too big for that, or you're going to be too weak if people um, um, see you doing that. But uh, yeah, I had times where 
my wife was sort of oblivious of it. I'm sure she had an inkling, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be screaming to my pillow, going like, "Just stop!" You know, my head was spinning, and I, I was thinking these sort of negative things that, uh, yeah. But that's letting it go too long. Um, so for what we're doing here, we we're trying to help people um, not get to those points. There's, there's, there's a. Uh, yeah, this is from I think Bud and I. We 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 say here to help people, and it's about um, learning, um, you know, what to do, and um, and that is to get help. You know, uh, old and young, you know, they um, they all get to a point where um, they've got these issues, but they don't want to talk about it um, because either they're scared or they feel that they um, they're ashamed. But um, there is nothing to be ashamed of because. <laughs> the reality is that probably, you know, with what's going on now, every second person has probably got issues. You know, it's, you know, I remember a mate pulling me to the side and took me into a a bar and full of people and and uh, and said, Roscoe, look around there. There's, you know, for every five people that's in this bar, there's probably two, if not three, that are going through what you're going through. They just either haven't haven't sort of admitted it yet, or maybe they don't even know. Um, but that was that's really true. It's true because it is, there's so many people out there that um, that just keep pushing, pushing through. Um, you know, hence, hence where you know, suicide comes into it. And uh, you know, it really shits me actually when I uh, when I hear people say, you know, when I hear someone's committed suicide, uh, which is you know way way too often, um, and and people say, oh, the bloody weak prick. Um, that really shits me because. To me, that to, just straight away, you know, and if I'm in the presence and I know that person well enough, I will stand up and say, well, you obviously haven't got a fucking clue what you're talking about because you obviously don't understand, um, you know, because I think until you've actually you know, been to that edge, um, you know, through my issues, I, I, I did, I got to the point where I was sort of standing on the edge of the cliff, um, looking over going, well, you know, um, I don't want to feel like this. You know, you certainly don't want to do anything um, against your family, um, but you also you're sort of a bit single-minded back into that stage that you you've got yourself that much into a cocoon. It's actually probably all about you, whereas it shouldn't be, because everyone else is there to support you, but you're not probably letting them. Um, so yeah, I sort of looked over that cliff and and uh, and you know, uh, luckily through my support of my family, friends, and everybody else, um, you. Yeah, you've got to pull yourself back um, and and put a plan in place to how the hell are you going to get out of here? Because that's that's the that's what happens, you know, when people are that desperate, um, they don't know how to get out of it, and uh, they actually think that they you know they're going to they're a burden on everybody, and they'll actually be less of a burden if they're not around. Um, so they can take that step of of um, you know, thinking they're doing everyone a favour, but obviously it's. A, Certainly not. Um, so it's a real, real prick of a position to be in. You know, it's a real. Um, it's something that I, you know, as I got got my way back out of it, I I made that statement. So I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. You know, not that I've got a lot of enemies and people like to say that too. But if there was one there, and I, I wouldn't wish them to even go through what I was going through at the time. Um, so, uh, but but I think Bud mentioned it before, and and, and Bud and I've talked about this. Is that uh, there is only one person? You know, when you are into that, into that, uh, in that position, there's, there's really only one person that can help you, and, and that's yourself, um, because you're really feeling in your own mind. You're, you're crying out for someone to help you. You're saying, "Oh, if someone could just do this, or someone could just give me a bit of direction, or they could help me out here." Um, but but no one really can because it's you know you're. You're the one that's there, and you've got to get yourself out of that position, or you're the one that has to change, change your ways, and get a, you know, get a, a, um, you know, make a plan. And it's you know, it's you've got to feel the same way. Yeah, that, mate? exactly. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that is that the turning point? Like when you get to that, the point where you're like, I think, oh, when you when you contemplate and not being here, is is, there- is that the breaking point? It is the, the the point with that is that um, some people can be in that in that and I, I've I've lost a number of friends, close friends that have committed suicide, um, and as I said, understanding what I understand, I, I sort of feel I know what they were going through, and um, 
yeah, you, well, they would have been in a position that, well, most of them would have felt they're doing everyone a favour. You know, like, I'm just a hindrance, you know, I can't do anything right, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm depressed, I don't, you know, I don't socialise, I don't talk to anyone anymore, um, I'm a burden, so so I'm probably best for everybody for to not be here. And that's, and, and, and they actually feel that that's the right, the right call. And in their own mind, that's, that's what the, that's what I'm sure that they're sort of feeling. So, you know, when someone says they're a weak prick um, for doing it, it's, it's not the case at all. It's, it's, um, a lot of them sort of feel that they're actually doing the right, that they're doing the right thing to others, um, but it certainly isn't. But, but both, both of you are the same in, in the aspect, like no, no mental health uh, case is worse or, than another one, but like you two specifically being a business owner, project manager, people are coming to you for the answers. Like, like I'm sure you had plenty of people coming to you and like looking up to you both about asking like, oh, I'm going through a rough trot and they're looking to you for guidance. But does that make, how does that feel when people are coming to you but you're going through the same thing? It's like, oh, I can't be going through this. I'm, I'm supposed to be the one that's guiding everyone else. But it, does that make it, make you a bit more vulnerable to it, I guess? Look, look uh, it, does it really to me it's it's you still do what you've got to do at the time like you, you're you're the pm or you're the general manager of the whole company whatever you are you, you you're there to help your people and you always do do that the best you can even if you're going through a hard time people think i'm the calmest person you know always put on a calm face even when i was at, at my worst um so just you just mask it and get on with it and it's not the right thing to do yeah I still remember being in the gym at Paulson's with you, and you—that's why you, because you, you were listening to the, I don't know what they, what you'd call them, like motivational stuff. And I'm like, well, I remember it coming out on the loudspeaker. What's this bloody weirdo listening to? <laughs> but um, it's as you said, you were always that positive person, and, and but, and you worked so hard at it. What was it like when you? started going the other direction yeah a lot of different feelings come in you get you get guilt and obviously shame you know we're all what's the guilt for what do you mean guilt guilt you get guilt around not being able to show up the best you can so not being able to do the job you're at the best you can do not being not able being positive to, like you used to be, that's right. to be doing uh, yeah, idea, that's not right. being the best not showing up as the best father you can be um and there's like we're all men we're in the mining industry uh, we've been in the mining industry for a long time and you get shame about, you know, I had to put my hand up because I couldn't do my job at the time. And, and you know, there's a lot of shame around that. Like I worked hard to get to that point and you just feel like in one day you're just throwing it all away because no one's got any idea. Right? And all, all of a sudden you just come out and say it and in one day you just feel like those 10 years that you've got used to get to that point is just gone. What, what time frame are we talking in like when you're – had to get to the stage where, as you said, I just, I just can't do this. I can't turn up. Yeah, I think it would have taken sort of eighteen months. So, and same as Roscoe, like I didn't sleep. I, di- I didn't sleep any more than three hours a night for about eighteen months, and that has a, a, a detrimental effect on your mental health as well. Yeah, it just wears you down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're I running on fumes, aren't you? Yeah, you know, for for myself, I was a bit the same. Like, uh, probably. You know, the last sort of three months of it, I didn't hardly sleep at all. And you know, you'd try and take stool knocks. I was actually popping stool knocks because I thought, well, hey, that's you know, that's going to put me to sleep for a few hours. And, but and again, you know, a lot of people had taken them the wrong way with that, and people even died of it. You know, uh, yeah. but it was <laughs> that was literally like getting someone getting a hammer and smacking on the head. Because um, when you did, when I woke up, it, <laughs> it felt shitload worse because you felt like someone had smacked you on the on the head. And and but uh, you know, as Bud said. The, the lack of sleep, just as as anybody would um, would know that, that's probably one of the biggest telling points. To be honest, is is your lack of sleep is is a is a sign that because the less sleep you have and and the more it starts to play with you, that's when it really starts to you know affect you, uh, affect your decision making. Um, you know, um, you know, I got to the point where I couldn't even leave the house. I mean. Um, you know, going back into 13, 2013 when I was going through it, it was probably nearly six months. Um, I couldn't front people, you know. Um, my boys, I've got three three sons, and and uh, you know they were used to the dad that you know built sort of many empires, I suppose you'd say, or you know in the mining, and and I was so positive I, there was nothing I couldn't do. 
and all of a sudden they had this this dad that was um, you know being negative about things um, couldn't talk to them about something without crying you know and I, that, that was my youngest son had to drive me around I, I couldn't even get behind the wheel of a car yeah. to drive for probably three months my, my youngest son Jasper but he you know he drove drove me around um, and and the reason for that was I just didn't have the confidence because you know the thing that it burns out is you the negativity also becomes you know, lack of confidence. You know, the lack of confidence to to answer something, the lack of confidence to even do something. Sitting on my boat here, I will have to admit there was probably 12, 18 months I never came near this boat because I was shit scared that something was going to happen to the boat. I, oh, really? I didn't yeah. take it out because I you know in my mind, uh, you know, it was going to break down, it was going to sink, or you know, like those stupid thoughts that, that 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 do come into your mind, and that's again driven by by negativity. Um, and 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 the, and the mental health part of things that gets to your brain that uh, you say you start to think you start thinking the worst of everything instead of you know when you're a positive person you're thinking the best I can do this because he it's easy but this is it becomes I can't do this because it's too hard and and then you, as I said you end up not being able to do anything and I'm sure like I'll, I'll say this to to people that are sitting uh, in a morning in a morning meeting, or you know, the start of a shift uh, meeting, um, that are probably sitting in the background and are reserved, they they're not contributing, they're not really a part of it because they're, they're scared. They they're probably sitting there scared that um, someone's going to ask them a, a safety question or something, um, and and you know that's something I'll say. If if you are in that position, you need help. You should you should be. That should be a bit of a trigger for you because, um, and 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 as groups of people as we work together underground, um, that's something that you do. That's a, a certainly a uh, a visual target is is people that are withdrawn and they, you know, that they're, they're not confident in doing something and it's all oh, you know I'm not too sure whether I can do that. Well, you know, generally that's a bit of a sign to be honest. Um, what do you think, buddies? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and you know since going through it myself, I, I can I can pick it a lot more now as well. I can I can see somebody and have a chat to them and, and sort of see in the background just something going on back there. What what's some of your big identifiers? Um, I can see a lot of stress in the forehead. So people that are squinting a lot and have the um, like creased forehead, I find that they're all usually going through something, yeah. and usually what it is is anxiety. So it's just the, the internal dialogue is just churning and churning, and it just doesn't turn off. Yeah, and yeah. emotional sort of um, people that um, tend to like you know, like I'm still doing it now after you know, all this time in you, and um, yeah, you know, people uh, become very sort of you know, defensive on things, or, or you know, and, and we can all we do that, but 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 with a bit of emotion in it as well, that because um, it's hurting them, um, that's a bit of a trigger maybe as well, you know. Do you reckon, uh, guys like? Like leaders, like yourself, as you said, you got to like both years you've had, like especially when you work in the roles, like you got you got to stat, you feel like you're turning up each day, you got to status to uphold. You're like I'm the leader of the either a project manager, or I'm a leader of this business. Everyone expects me to have the answers, and does that just exacerbate the downfall of your mental health if you're having dramas, knowing that you got to try and maintain that every day? And that does that just make it go so much quicker and more vicious? Certainly, certainly can, certainly can. Um, yeah, it's again that's expectation, isn't it? Like yeah. you know, because you're sort of that's high, a, and that's all your own exactly. Talk it's your, in your, head, you, isn't it's it? your expectation of how high you know you said it, and and uh, and sometimes other people don't even actually care, don't even care. You know, um, they don't care, but you do. You it's like they said you feel guilty on something that you probably shouldn't even be feeling guilty about. Um, but that's that's that, that that negative drive that comes into your into your mind. And, I suppose I was just going to say something that you you asked before, Maddie, and that is, um, uh, you know, how long does it take? I think you were probably asking how long does it take to take effect. Um, you know, uh, Bud might have been 18 months, but some people can be a, a lot quicker than that because, um, and I'll, I'll use a, you know, I won't use any names or example, but but young people today, um, they they want everything now. Um, I mean, not saying that we didn't want things that when we were younger as well, but you know the to, to get married, have kids, um, have a have a house, have the best, have a, a flash car. You know, they all want it by the time they're twenty five. Um, you know, I, I don't remember back whether that was something that we were chasing. Um, but 
but, but the pressure that they put on themselves and, and then they, they, they're so committed um, and this is something that I've talked to, to my people in, in, in our organisation that we have to be careful and watch for is young people hearing that there's big money in mining so they come targeted um, to try and get into mining because they think it's going to make them you know, a lot of money so they can pay their debt off. Um, to me, the worst person to can have on site is some young person that's got debt to the hilt because he's got too much pressure on. He's got a, uh, if he's got a wife at home with a young child and, and he's trying to pay a house off, um, as much as we all like to help that person and think, well, you know, yeah, no, we'll give him a job. To be honest, you're probably, you're probably doing an injustice because it's probably not the um, surrounding of atmosphere that, he, that that person really needs because it's just adding to the pressure. Um, you know, um, the, 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 the child gets sick and the wife wants him home and, and he's saying, well, I can't because I need to be making money to be part of the house. You know, there's, just, there's, just, there's those pressures that um, us as employees, we do need to be you know, a, bit, uh, a bit more careful about um, because you know, we can be putting those people into that uh, position that, that we don't even realise that, uh, that we're doing it. You know? Oh, it's a it's a scary word to talk about. Is a lot talking about mental health and depression is one thing, but when you mention when suicide, when you talk about suicide, how how common it is. But the, oh, I think the scary thing is, and you can both probably give me an insight, um, is how many people get very close to doing it. That's probably the scary thing. Like, is it is it that real? Like, like will you can you when you both go through something like this, are you that close? That it scares you, like I'm, I might follow through with this. Is that is that how bad it gets? Um, well, from from my position, I think um, you probably don't think about that until you have actually stepped back. Yeah, um, you don't know as, you're doing it. Yeah, as I as I was sort of saying, I think it drives you to that point um, because you believe you actually you believe yourself um, that you're a, a burden. Um, you know, you're a burden to your family or you're a burden to your workers, you're a burden to everybody. So it's that, it's, that's the thing that's, that you've got to get right in your mind that, you know, that, that, you, that you aren't. And, you know, I'm the same, a loving wife, you know, great, great family support. Um, and I, you know, it was, a, it was a, a few years ago now, but I, I don't think I sort of planned to do anything. But I do remember saying to my wife, and she told you this as well, like I just said to her one morning, you know, if I if I wake up like this tomorrow morning, I don't particularly want to be here. Um, you know, my head's hissing. I can't think. I, I can't sleep. I feel like shit. Um, I can't face anybody. I don't, I don't want to talk to anybody. Um, um, you know, you feel everyone's looking at you sideways. Um, so yeah, you, you sort of get to that point that well, for me, I, it wasn't that I wanted to to commit suicide, but I just didn't want to feel like this anymore either. And and, um, and 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 really, you need to get help before that. I, I took mine too far, uh, I, I probably believe. But but there's a question that you actually asked before, and I just want to get this one in, that I don't believe that this is something that you actually, it's not like a flu or it's not like a break and broken leg or something. You need to manage it possibly for the rest of your life. Uh, I do. Um, I know I need to, to manage it because... Uh, no, I don't drink anymore. Those that <laughs> knew me from back in my younger days, I played bloody as hard as the best of them, you know. And you know, drinking a carton of beer, no, it wasn't. Well, it wasn't that, that was piece of piss. Um, and uh, then you work out the next day, and you'd be ready. You'd be ready uh, to do it all again. Um, yeah, you you played as hard as you as you could, um, and you worked as hard as you could. Um, and what about you, bud? Like same as I said, every case is unique. Um, did you did you take that step back and sort of scared you where you were at and you didn't know? Well, I was scared at the time. Um, I didn't get to that point where I was considering it or or wanted to do it at all. Like, and I, but what it did, it gave me a good insight into why people actually why what they want to do it, why why they think it's a good idea because they actually think it's a burden. So you know, you, it's you know they think that people think that it's um, hard on the family, but they don't even contemplate that they're not thinking about that they're thinking that them being around is what's hard on the family and hard on their friends not not them um not being around is it 
I've I've been I've been around one that uh, one that's happened in an earlier life. I won't speak about it, but um, yeah, it was. I, I remember the people saying that this person magically seemed to get better, um, and then like it's and then and then they committed suicide a week or two later. And it was, and it was the scariest thing to think about. Is like, it's like they come to peace with the whole thing. That's that's correct. I believe which that is that's, very scary. I like, that's and, um, the case. and confronting the decisions already been made. Yeah, yeah. And they and think they made the right decision. Yeah, in yeah. Their mind. And everyone's like, oh, they just uh, they like that's why they think it wasn't coming. But that, it's like an indicator in itself, um, which is very scary because. Um, as you said, you 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 both been like advocates for this, and you're trying to help. And but the hardest thing, the biggest uphill battle that everyone that's trying to help is like exactly what you both said. The only person to bring the person out is themselves. Sometimes, so, and like how and so how like where where do you start? How do you help? How do people help? We've got to talk about it. that's the thing. We've, we've all sat at the the crib room table and we've we've traded war stories about you know how we got this scar and how we went through that, but. Uh, how many times have you ever ever been down underground and sat at the crib table and someone said, oh, look, I went through a hard stage at one time and uh, my brain wasn't actually working the way I wanted. No one's ever said that. Yeah. So, you know, the message today that we want to get out is you, you need to talk about it and talk about it's the first step of, of helping yourself. Um, you know, there's a lot of means to, these days. Um, EAP providers, most companies have got EAP providers you can you can reach out to, but um, you just got to make that decision just to reach out and start talking about it to other people. How would you pull yourself out? How did, like you, you individually, like I assume it's not a bloody, you don't just come out of the weekend and say, oh, shit, I think I'm ready to come out of this. I assume it's a very long process. What did you do? Can I just sort of say that's yeah, sorry, where I lost my train of thought. That's what I was actually going to say was um, is that, uh, you know, this is something that's sort of self, it's self-managed. Um, uh, I... <laughs> I give myself a talking to, I reckon, once a week um, on, on because you can get carried away. I remember, you know, going back when I, you know, sort of 14, 15, 2014, 15, when I was sort of feeling better for myself, with myself, I wanted to go out and do this and do this, and I was going to, you know, do things in Kalgoorlie and the gold fields. And, and then, it, then I realised how big a problem this was. It's huge and, and um, you know, way more than than – than I could do myself. Um, so you've, you've got to be careful because, um, yeah, you can you can also bring yourself back down into it very easily. And, um, um, you know, I did things, um, like, you know, to, to set a, a bit of a program, I had to sort of, you have to sort of start your day. And, and to me, I, I do a boot camp. I've been doing a boot camp probably for eight years now. I'm probably fitter than I've bloody ever been. I'm nearly, I'm bloody 60 next year. But, um, <laughs> But but it helps me because uh, again, um, yeah. It, what I started to say it's not that you have a flu and you get over it. It's or or a broken leg and you get over it. The, the the trouble is that thing can come. It can come back on you really fast if you don't look after yourself. And and as much as um, as, as Bud was saying before, you know, when you are in that management position that you are trying to help everybody else, um, at the end of the day. Um, and I think it's a, a true fact, and it's, it sort of sounds selfish, and I used to think it was selfish myself. But if I'm no good myself, I can't help anybody else. And and if I'm not good, um, that gives my wife the shits, and it gives my kids the shits because as a family, you know, you you've got to be feeling right, and, and you've got to be you know be with it to to join into things. And, and if you don't do it, um, you can slip backwards pretty pretty you know, very easily. And um, so. So you know, managing your managing your life and working out what works and what doesn't. Like I said, I was a you know, I was a big drinker, big player. I spent twenty years on the road, you know, um, overseas traveling and and you know, bloody uh, uh, drink, drinking Barzio in China and trying to drink all the Chinese <laughs> under the table and and uh, you know and and you know traveling somewhere every week around the world, get on and off planes and and. Uh, you know that's just a part of it. As I say, burn yourself out. But you you've got to look at yeah, you can't do that. And so you've got to manage yourself as to what you can do. Um, and I so said I get to levels. Uh, you know I can feel if I don't if I don't train. This is myself. If I don't train in the morning, um, 
um, the sort of adrenaline builds up in me and, and I can actually feel it tuning in my stomach if I don't sort of have a, an exercise session in the morning to burn that, that um, adrenaline off. And as I say, as silly as it might sound, but that's, that's a sign for me that, um, that, you know, hang on, we'll woo back because I've obviously got some pressures there that I didn't realise on the, you, know, you can burp, you can taste it. Um, so there are signs, um, but you just got to know what they are. And, and uh, you know, drinking, uh, I, I probably didn't drink for probably five years. I never really had a drink. Um, but then I sort of got back and tried to be a bit social and I had a, you know, a drink here or there. And what I found if I had four or five drinks, that the, the fourth one was probably okay. The, the sixth one I'd gone too far and, and then I couldn't sleep at night and my head started playing bloody silly buggers with me and, and I'll still do it. It'll still do that now. Like so, I, I, I sort of learnt my limitations are, is to try and be sociable and, and and have a drink. But if you can't, if you can't, don't feel bad that you're not drinking because if that's it's about you. It's about you are the one that needs to manage it. And if it's uh, there's there's tricks there's tricks to all of the sort of stuff that that come with it, Maddie. And yeah. You know, um, I guess you, one you, trick doesn't work for the same people too. It doesn't, but these yeah. are little tricks I'll tell you. Like uh, <laughs> when you're with your mates, and uh, you know they they you know you you put yourself, and I'm sure you've seen it. Like you hop on a, on a on the boat, go to the pub with a group of ten people, and they say, "Do you want a beer?" You're better off saying yes and getting a beer in your hand than saying no. And because you don't drink, of course, you, for a start, you say no, and then. Uh, People just hound you, don't yeah. they? They go, you sure you don't want to drink? Or do you want this? To Mate, just leave me alone. I just I just don't want anything. But but um, so, so yeah, accept the beer. Doesn't mean you have to drink it. Um, one of the good tricks is put it in the stubby holder so then they can't see that, you're, <laughs> that um, you know, what you're drunk. And you might take a little bit of a sip and might be a sip and you're spitting it back in. Uh, as long as you're standing there with the beer in your hand yeah. in, this, in some of these situations, people will leave you alone. Aussie it's, culture, isn't it? It yeah. is, yeah. It's, yeah. And, and they leave, but, but so, and that's hard. As hard as what what Bud and I talk about is, is for you to speak about it. Some of these things are, are hard tricks that you learn, but but hey, they they help you. Uh, they make it easier for you. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, say people people can be quite cruel to you when they don't even know it at times. You know, they're pushing you, pushing you, pushing, and you just sort of. You've got to learn how to manage that as well. Yeah. Well, at least everyone knows now that not don't waste ten bucks on buying Roscoe beer. He's <laughs> yeah. going to bloody yeah. tip it's it out of the bottle of it. So yeah. if you need yeah. it, <laughs> back to managing it. Like, yeah. I, I still have to manage it myself, and yeah. and I, I spoke about the line in the sand earlier. Like I know where that line in the sand is now, and I don't let myself get get there. I know when I overload too much, I hate to take on too much, so that I can I can feel myself approaching that line. Um, I got. A ritual I go through every morning, so I start managing my day at five o'clock when I get up. So I go, I journal, um, which has is, is really helped me get you know all the jumble stuff out of my head onto paper, and it's a, a, just a good cre- creative outlet as well. Um, try to do some meditation, but I struggle with it a bit, so I'm still working on that one. But exercise and healthy eating—that that's been the big savior for me because I, like Roscoe, I got all this spent, all this built up energy in me all the time, and I just got to get it out. And if I don't Start the day with exercise. I know um, I don't have such a good day as, as I do when I, you know, get there and train and then go for a run and, and then burn it all out. So you, you do have to manage it, but it is manageable. It it, it, is, it is a bump in the road. Um, it doesn't have to be a life sentence. It doesn't have to be a struggle for the rest of your life. You, you can manage it even if you, you think you can't at the time. Um, there's ways and means. You'll learn enough. You'll learn enough about yourself to to actually get there, but. The thing is, you have your non-negotiables that you just do. Once you get those done, then things just get better. Are you, were you were you both managing it before without knowing it? Like you know, say you you ma- like. Do you reckon it was always it's always there, but now you you I guess you've identified what it is and you can you can manage it. Was it happening happening in before the before everything uh, before you went really downhill? Was it there and you didn't know it? Yeah, well, reflecting you don't, well, on you it. Well, you don't know. You don't know until you realise how you're feeling. And um, I, I did manage it actually, but I managed it with alcohol, yeah. which is is not ideal. So you know, I was I go back to my room and and on my own, and when I was on site, and, and takes half a dozen stubbies back there and drink those. Yeah, that was that was how I managed it, and that would get me off to sleep. It would just calm me down, get me off to sleep. But that's got an end game, as I found out. Yeah, what. I know we said we weren't going to go too much into business side of things, but 
the you because you had the, like the live mind thing. You had that in your head for a long time. Like, like you were trying to was that. What did that do for the whole process? Now that it's it's come to fruition, did that did that sort of need to need to happen for you to was that was that a factor in having that in your head buzzing away when you being a project manager as well? Did that was that a negative thing for mental health for you? No, I don't believe so. I've got a busy mind anyway. So if it wasn't that, it was going to be something, something else. else. Yeah. So it, you know, the mind doesn't stop, which you know it served me well most of the time. Yeah. Um, uh, when, you know, obviously, when I was project manager, I, I had to park that idea up because I was busy and uh, I didn't have time to do anything else. Um, but now, you know, looking back, I, I'm grateful. Like Roscoe said, I'm, I'm actually grateful that I went through that that experience. You know, with with anxiety and and if I didn't, I don't know that I'd be doing what I'm doing now with with my business and, and live mine. I just don't think I would be. Um, so it's, it's tough. It's a hard pill to swallow at the time, but you know things happen for a reason, and mm, sure. sometimes you, you just got to run with it and make the most of it. Well, I was about to ask the, that exact thing. Uh, I know you said you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy, but would you would you erase it from your life? Um, there's a lot of uh, things that you sort of say. You know, look back at your life, I suppose, and and I often say this to people: the you know the 80s in Kalgoorlie was the Wild West, and and as a young fella. If I ever live my life again, I'll do that all again. Yeah. Um, but uh, and yeah, I suppose if you're you know asking it from a wisdom point of view, um, I'd say yeah, you know because I, I've learnt so much um, out of this and um, and and probably respecting um, things like you know, like your family, um, you know having a supportive family is is, is really and I, and I understand that there's people there that probably haven't got that and and. Um, and I was very lucky because I had such a supportive family uh, and my business side I had such a supportive um, partner uh, and, and uh, Folsey, Michael Folds. And I, I wouldn't have been able to, yeah, probably handle it as well as I, I have without without their support. Um, yeah, that, that was just tremendous. And I, I, was, I was very lucky and I know that, say, there's people that possibly haven't got that support that – can sort of say, oh well, yeah, you were lucky you had all that. No, I haven't. Well, I've got jack shit to, to help me. Um, but but that is where the the game isn't the same for everybody, you know. Unfortunately, um, but uh, yeah, that um, support yeah, that's what you certainly uh, and they say uh, your kids, um, your, your yeah your values change. Um, and like I said, really uh, the the important thing is that. Um, you need to, as I said, as, as um, selfish as it might be, if you're not okay, you know, you, you can't manage yourself, well, then you can't help others. Um, and, you know, so then it's your, you know, your family is sort of next in line and then you sort of your, your, your work and, and that sort of comes. So you, you've got to prioritise a, a little, a, a few things. And, and, and my, um, for my life, my family's number one. So, you know, it's about, about uh, you know, Having them right, and if I'm not right, you know, there's going to be a factor that's not right for them. So it's really important for me to make sure I get my balance right to to be right for them. Right? Yeah. yeah. So look, myself, I didn't, I, or I still don't have a lot of family over here. So I've got, I've got a cousin here. So it's because you're a true blue legend, New South Welshman, <laughs> like yourself, mate. <laughs> Tough blues week man. for us, mate. Tough blues. week. Yeah. Tough week Go indeed, to blues. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like, very fortunate that I've got a really good group of friends around me, and especially now, like this, this at this very time now, I've got some people around me that are very understanding, very supportive. But that's um, yeah, it still blows me away. We just have a lot of conversations and. You know, we as we as men, we've changed a lot over the over the last twenty years. You know, we we I think we're getting better. I've got a couple of mates that will, will finish a conversation and they'll say in a manly way, they'll say, "Love you, man." Yeah. Like, that wouldn't happen twenty years ago. Yeah. You would have been called all sorts of names, but I think I think we are getting better at at you know being men and and being fathers and um um this going through this sort of thing is like uh, Roscoe said, you know, changed my values. It, it, it did change my life. At the time, it's, it's, it's fucking horrible. But I look back at it now and I, I wouldn't take it back because, you know, that's, that's my past and all that's shaped who I am today. And, and today, you know, I'm pretty happy with, with the person I am. But you can, well, yeah, and you could also look at it like the, as you said, you've gone through the, probably the, the, the shittest thing in your life you'll both ever go through, but the, that's now getting used to help possibly thousands of people. 
like with what you're doing. That's that's the fantastic thing about coming out the other side and putting it all to use. Because think of the people that you can all help. Have you have you have you ter- have you been involved in helping people so far and seen a turnaround? Either of you? Well, Roscoe, he, sure. he, yeah. Roscoe was introduced to me. Like when I was going through it, Roscoe didn't know who I was. He was we were connected by a mutual friend in in Bill and. Um, he just come out and we had a conversation and it changed my life. It changed it changed my recovery. Like I'm forever grateful. I've said it before. Like it was the mining industry that that pulled me up out of the, out of the gutter and and helped me back. And yeah, it was that that I'm eternally grateful for it. And Roscoe taught me to to talk about it. Simple as that. Yeah. It's um. It only takes one person. I've found at sight. Like no, it and. I think it is changing on site. I'm, I'm pretty sure it is because I don't say so if you're at the if we're at the wedding and there's one bloke that or, or woman whatever might be just might be having something going on. It only takes one person to sort of probe a question in front of everyone, ask their right, and everyone seems to start getting involved. But it's just it's taken that you 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 got to be that person that gets the convo going. I reckon yeah. I, I like doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, it's not not as easy as 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 uh, you know. I think we. Again, those that are possibly struggling that are listening to it um, might not, uh, because it's it's not easy to speak. Um, and then on the other side of it, um, not everybody wants to to hear it. Not everybody wants to. There's there's people that that either um, are scared of it themselves. Well, we know that's the right word, scared. Um, they. They go, oh, you know, I've got enough shit on my, I've got enough shit on my plate myself without, uh, you know, listening to somebody else that's got issues. Um, there's a lot of people. So, so one thing that uh, in the GBF's done, and I think it's, it's, it's been awesome, um, and and that is you know, a number of years ago. I can't even remember how long the doc must have been in, involved. But you know, we employed a doctor, uh, Mark De Cruz, a um, uh, doctor as a part of our. Um, um, Part of our group, um, so so that people you know had a um, an educated person to go and talk to because I suppose it is it is the right thing to talk to to be able to, but it is also the, um, speaking to the right person as well because again one thing that if I think if you took that lead and you you got yourself into finally I'm going to go and tell tell somebody and he turns around and says well stuff you know, I've got enough fucking problems of my own you know um, but. And that can, can probably shatter them, but but uh, but the thing is, if you are that sort of person, um, please, you know, direct them to the right people, or, or you know, go and tell your management. And and it doesn't mean that your project manager on site has actually got the, you know, he him personally he might not be able to to help you, but but hopefully there's enough in this now that understanding in there that that um, you know people will direct you to the right to the right place and. And as I said, we you know we're lucky within uh, within our GBF McMahon's group now that we've um, you know, that uh, we've got a doctor there that that um, and I know as I know as as early as two days ago because I know someone that, that had um, depression within our group that, that went to have a talk to the doc you know and and um, you know and the feedback I've got is that it's 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 changed that person you know a young fella that uh, was desperate didn't really know what to do where to go. Um, but you know, within the group, a couple of people have directed them to, to mate. You need to go and see you know, uh, the doc, um, and and you know, then the docs you know, assist them and put a put a program into place. And and and, and um, only early, very early days for this person, but but at least he's taken the first step. You know, yeah. Um, oh, pers- <laughs> again, personally, I think any reasonable size organisation should have some sort of uh, you know some sort of doctor of that understands and can can manage help help you manage it um, in place because it's certainly been a big thing for, for GB here. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, over the last twenty years, we, you know, we took have health and safety on site, and we've had a strong focus on safety, and rightfully so. We were in a bad place in you know late eighties, early nineties, and we've come a long way. Um, but we didn't focus a lot on the health side of things, and I get to a lot of different mine sites now, and I see I'm starting to see more often. Um, People that are dedicated, their job is dedicated to health and well-being on site, which is good to see. Yeah, yeah we've got a really good, uh, really good group. Um, uh, Sarah and his team at uh, McMahon's. It's 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 a uh, yeah, it's a team about uh, 
you know, health and well-being and, and um, yeah, they travel the sites and they're actually just um, Strong Minds, Strong Minds. I'm not sure whether you've heard it, but it's a it's a program that they've uh, developed and, and, and putting out there to um, to help the mining uh, in particular. So, Did, did you it. sort of spearhead that yourself, Roscoe? No, actually, uh, no, it was something that uh, McMahon's already had in place uh, yeah. prior to us um, uh, coming on board and, and I think uh, so has been a big driver of that, you know, He's a big ex-cage fighter. Um, you know, him and I have had a, a number of uh, discussions on things, and he's another one. But you know, this bloke's had, oh, I think it was 15 or 17 UFC belts in, the, in, a, in, a, in a bloody uh, in a cage, yeah. um, and yet he's had his, his, had his issues of, of mental health. Yeah. Um, again, another one of those ones that uh, who would have thought? Um, but, um, yeah, he's doing, doing a great job. Do you, do you think there's a... Uh, are people sometimes, is it a bit of a taboo, like a bit scared of saying like you've got to go see a doctor or a psychologist? Do, do some people going through it, do you think, respond better to like confide in someone, another minor that might be going through it or been through it? Do they, is there, like as you said, like your biggest help was Roscoe. Roscoe's not a qualified doctor, but that's, no, for sure. you know, like, and that's, um, that'd be a big part of it, I think. Like the, you, you can match people up. That's it. I suppose there's an inter- sorry, but it's just an interesting thing that we're talking about here. I'm, I'm just thinking as we're going, and and uh, you know, as much as we talk about you know, you know, men and and uh, you know, muncho ness and, and uh, being hard on it, um, what we've also got to realise is a, a lot of females, uh, you know, more than the past coming into in the mining industry, and you know, we're all big advocates of, and we've you know, we as a as a group have got some amazing. Females that work for us, you know, they really blow me away with some of the stuff that they can they can do. It's because uh, if you took it back to the eighties when when we were all throwing air legs around, like uh, you know, you just didn't have women in this game, and and now they they are a big part of it. Um, so, being that they are the the, the minor um, minority uh, minority of of, uh, of probably people that we're, that we're talking about. We do need to probably have a bit of a focus on that because it's probably, you know, we talk about, oh, you know, go and talk to your mates. Well, if there's two females on a crew of 20, 20 blokes, it's obviously, it's, it's hard for them. So we, we need to work out how we how we manage that as well because <laughs> they're just as vulnerable as what we are, you know. they um, you know, I think it's all human beings. It's not just, just males that go through this. So the females do as well and uh, they might have different things that can, can trigger it, but, but um, we need to... Probably learn how to manage that better. It's something that I can see as as an area that uh, if I was to put forward, you know, something that we need to work a little bit harder on um, is, is probably the the, the female um, the people in our industry because they are it is, it is growing for them and uh, yeah, I'm not sure they've got that same um, like you know, a, like a mate network. As yeah, much yeah. As I blokes, suppose yeah. I'm trying to say yeah. Yeah. What's well, what's your you, you said have a vision for this. What's the vision? What's the, you, you, you take taken on a big beast, really? Like trying to it, it, the funniest thing, like uh, all the years of mining experience between you, is uh, you'd think you'd be mentoring people in mining, but it's uh, you've ended up in a whole a whole another area that you're trying to help people. It's a, it's that's the it's a surprise like surprising thing. You wouldn't think you'd end up being mental health advocates after all the year and years of mining. But what's the what's the vision? Where do, where do you just want to? I guess well, uh, 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 I guess a legacy because it'll it's going to be something we're going to be battling forever. But you want to leave a legacy with it. Yeah, um, I'm not so much that this is a, a personal thing, but I, I, I think it's been a good move that uh, from GBF McMahon's uh, point of view is is um, and, and he happens to be my brother-in-law that we've just sort of put him to a position that um, that that talks to our employees and goes to you know does goes around the sites. It was probably something that that um, I was trying to do um i probably you know wasn't the right person because it's a designated sort of job um but um you know what fredo does is uh goes around all our, our sites and and actually sits down with the with the, you know each of the employees and and says well okay you know you've been with us for one year or 10 years but what is it you want to do where do you want to go you know what are you good at what aren't you good at you know and and has a a talk through um that because a, a lot of the a lot of this trigger comes from people biting off more than they can chew, or or feeling that okay, you know, we 
we start as a truck driver, then we go as a nipper, then we, you know, then we're this, and then we're that. And they get to a point where something that they they might not be able to break through, or they, they're not good at, um, can cause them stress uh, that they're doing something that they they feel well, if I don't do it, I, I'm not going to get to the next step. Um, whereas you know what we're trying to do is is um, you know discuss that with everybody and, and where is it you want to be? You know what, what is it you want to be? Um, do you want to be the, you know, the, a butter gun jumbo operator, or do you, you know, do you, do you want to get into management? Do you want to be a shift boss? Um, you know, these are these might only be kids that are in their twenties, but but it's getting them thinking um, about what they want to do because I think that's a big part of a part in our industry that, that causes some some uh, uh, problems because they, you know, everyone wants to be a jumbo operator because they're the highest paid highest paid uh, people, you know. Um, Probably in my own opinion, I don't know whether that's right because ship bosses have probably got the most responsible job mm, on the mine, yep. and uh, and unfortunately, there's you know, we're looking at that ourselves. It's um, they're probably not remunerated as as well as what they should be, but uh, um, because of I'm only saying that because of the uh, responsibility that they've got, you know, and the and the sh- and the shortage of them as well because it's yep. such a high pressure job, and the easiest thing to do is pull pulling levers is a lot easier than being a shift boss, even just general hours in the day, and everyone's yep. struggling to get shift bosses. Yeah, it's um, yeah. Just don't drop the jumbo wages. Yeah, no, 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 too I'm off it. But, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you, bud? With uh, you got you got the lot, you got everything going on with live mine as well, and you you're taking on this side of things. What, what's what's your, where do you want to go with it? Mental health side of things. Um, it's more about just talking about it and, and letting people know that it, it's okay. It's okay not to be fine sometimes, and. Um, you know, like Roscoe said, it's a beast. You don't realise. You know, at my lowest point, I was I was laying on the ground and I was, I was thinking that you know, when I come good, I'm going to help help everyone with this. Mm. But you know, then you, when you get there, you, when you get out of it, you think, "Well, oh, this is a fucking beast." And I don't. It's, it's, huge, eh? that's, it's so that's big. I don't know if I can, you. you know, put my best foot forward and, and be able to to help everybody. So it's basically just been um, been able to talk about it enough. And you know, since I've I've come out publicly and spoke about, it, I've had you'd be surprised the people that have. That have came up to me and, and and said thanks for talking about that and and tell, tell, start to tell me their story about um, what they've gone through and yeah it's it's humbling I like it yeah yeah hey, but how hard is it to uh, oh I suppose you got to be honest like when someone says oh, I feel shit what do I do what do you say to them as because well, you can't fix it like, no like, the, and and um, as you said uh, we're probably not qualified people as well so I think you know the the, the the thing to direct them to is is to the appropriate and the right uh, help that they require, which is quite possibly a you know in our case a doctor, um, yeah. or I think there needs to be more support in, in every organisation. There should you know, there needs to be a uh, a lot more emphasis on setting up um, you know somewhere for people to go because it is it is you, you know they're right um, you know we all we're sitting here um, saying go and get help. Um, or we'll talk to people um, where there are, there's the right and the wrong people to talk to, and there's also um, no one that's probably got the label that sort of says, "Well, you know, I'm the I'm the go-to person for for mental uh, health or, or health and well-being." So, I think the development it's 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 a huge epi- epidemic this thing, and it's, and I said it's not going away, and you now with the current way the world is, um, it's going to get worse. Um, and 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 like I know from myself, you've got to manage it so it's always going to be there. So it's not something that's going to go away. It's, it's, it's something that's going to get worse because of more people in it. But those that have also got it are, are still going to need care. Um, so you know, I still need I still need help at times as well. And 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 again, you know, like you know, the discussions that Bud and I have and, and other people that um, that helps me too. Uh, just just back the other way because. Um, you know that you're not you know, you're not the only one that's in it. Um, well, we all know you're not the only one, but but I feel a lot com- more comfortable talking with Bud um, about it because I know that he understands. And I suppose the the people that um, as you said, the target on a, on a mind side are probably those that are have maybe come out in the in the past that they're the people that that should be. Hopefully, putting your hand up and saying, "Well, hey, I, you know, I can help you because I actually understand it." Yeah. Um, but 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 in saying that, they 
they, they are probably you know still trying to manage it themselves as well. Um, so it's you know, it's it's why it's where it is because it's it's a bit like bloody COVID. No one really knows how to handle it. Yeah. Um, um, in, in my view, uh, a lot of people doing a lot of great work and and that. Um, but yeah, it's a it's, a, it's an epidemic, you know. Well, what's some of the Oh, it's hard to explain. Like, like things to avoid. Like, like as you said, you, t- you spoke about like getting in, like getting in too much debt, trying putting so much pressure on yourself at work to like you're waiting on the next pay. Like, is there is there things in like whether it's situations or things in life you should try and avoid to not like maybe like the things like being in a lot of debt can exacerbate any mental health issues. Can you give advice to young people about? Setting, oh. like, be, like good life things oh. to do to avoid spiraling down without think, knowing it? Yeah, I think from a, a management point of view, um, certainly, um, you know, there's the assistance when people get to that point that they need it. But but uh, there's certainly um, opportunity for more input from companies to assist their employees as to how to manage. And uh, it's... The trouble with so many sort of do-gooders these days, you know, you, you, where's the bloody line? You know, like mm. you're trying to help somebody, and then next thing you're getting criticised because you, you, you know, you overstep a, a certain mark. Um, but, but um, you know, giving people financial advice, um, uh, you know, at a young age. But then, of course, the people are reluctant because if it doesn't go right, they, you know, it comes back on them. Um, but, 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 yeah, putting, you know. Management plans, or, or just yeah, getting people to understand that uh, you know, because some people thrive on debt, some people don't like debt, and again, it's yeah. people. It's people are different, um, and it's hard to stop someone from going where they want to go. Uh, but that's just we keep saying no substitute for experience, and the older you get, the more experience that you get, and and uh, you know you, you sort of try and pass that on to your kids and and, and other people, I suppose. But um, yeah, the um, the responsibility, you know, is is certainly you know coming a, a lot of the way of sort of the employer and employees don't want to really hear that. And um, well, I will not say that. I'm not saying that in a bad way, but because because it is is uh, you know there's a certain um, say line that you can go to, and, and and people are. I know. I remember when when I was sort of yeah say coming out of it, and thinking I'm going to help. You know, I'll do this and I'll do that. Um, we all got. I got pulled back a, a, a few times by. Hang on a minute, you know, you, you can't can't be overstepping the mark. You're trying to be too helpful, you know. Yeah. Um, and those boundaries and the and a lot of things we do, I suppose. But yeah, probably needs more, more of a workshop than me giving my thoughts on it. But uh, yeah. it's certainly um, food for thought for organisations to to think about those things. Yeah. What about your end, bud? Do you say do you notice people when they're a bit vulnerable to it, put a bit too much pressure on themselves when they're young, and you just thought this uh, this person could be like if it just doesn't go right for them, it could go the other way pretty easily. Yeah, but it's, it, it is hard to spot somebody who is going to fall to it. Um, but yeah, definitely things you can do to, to stop it, and, and taking on too much, whether it is debt or or whatever it is, that that can lead you know down the wrong path really easy um and looking after yourself looking after your health that's important um you know they we see that on tv abc act belong commit you know being being a part of of the mining community you know if you're on site you don't just go and, and retreat back to your room every night you should should be you know part of the mining community you get involved in things and it, it actually does help you mm. it doesn't have to be the wet mess every night well, there's, there's a, a community in the gym as well. There's isn't a community there? in the gym, and the, the yeah. wet mess is good fun. Don't worry, I've, I've said it a few wet messes in my time. But um, you know, there can be other things that you do. There's basketball on most sites. It could be cricket, tennis, whatever. Just get involved. Don't just just go to site and, and sit in your room because that that's that's a short game. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's but that's because you don't have to go to the wet mess and have eight. Like you can you can just go there and have one. Like it's just. Not that I do. Like I have a, like I've reduced mine because I was having too much. Yeah. I won't lie. Yeah. And yeah. bloody, as I said to you before, I seemed to. I figured out the less I drank, the easier my missus was to get along with. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I was the problem. Um, but it's just that you just got to be around people. 
Well, even though you can, you can sit there with two bloody beers and for an hour, but you're you're around people. It's great listening to yarns, listening to how how, how good everyone is at, yeah. down the hole because they're pretty good at the pub. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone bolt mesh pulls through a shift at yeah. the pub, but um, I think the shift the shift has certainly uh, come to being you know more health and fitness, and, and I know you say you can have people sort of throw shit back at us. One being older, uh, experienced a lot of these things, and now. Um, uh, yeah, not drinking much, and I exercise, and I eat. You know, but like uh, Bud said, you know, you know, eating is a big, big thing as well. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I said some people said yes. Uh, well, that's all right for you, but but um, you know, you're asking us questions. What we believe is has made it right for us, and and those are things that have certainly helped me. You know, yeah, you know, back off from a drink and uh, drink what I can manage. It's, it makes me feel best. Um, you know, eat eat well. Um, uh, and, and I know that um, you know uh, on the site sometimes there's there's uh, issues that sort of come up about the you know the, the messes on site and what sort of food is sort of there available. Fucking for, whinge and pricks, oh, yeah, shits me. It's, 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 you know, that's, it's a big issue, as you know. So, <laughs> so you know, I mean that they, 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 they could be looked at a bit harder by by clients and and, and whatever. So to to try and help um, get get the right sort of food there. Um, but yeah, and, and fitness. Fitness is it just yeah clears your mind and, and, and helps you. So, uh, um, but yeah, it's like, um, being friendly. Uh, I walk past everybody and say good morning to them, and it's quite interesting. Some people just don't say anything and walk straight past. Other people will say good morning back. You know, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's try and be a bit friendly. I think <laughs> it makes the world a better place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I reckon God, the bloody tell you what. If any, mine sort foods, buddy. It's like sizzler every day. I love it. So it's free. You don't have to wash up. I think it's, but it's it's flipping that bloody as you said, flip, flip this, flick the switch or whatever the saying is. Like, look at our po- like positive that you're getting all this bloody free food. And, yeah, and I eat more veggies up at site than I do at home. Yeah, yeah it's, more, it's more of a reflection on the on the person at the time than than the actual food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Because it's up. To, it's just like we we're talking about. It's up yeah. to you to what you do. Yeah. yeah, so it's up to you to look at trying to eat. Yep. Eat better, and it's, 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 I bet you it's there. You just got to look for it a bit yep. better, a bit harder. Yeah. Well, you might be able to give me some advice, actually, because I like my situation at the moment. I, me do. I'm on the jumbo, so I don't. I can burn fat easily, like which is a, which is a bad thing because I. My diet's not that good. I run around like a flat out underground, so I don't put on weight. But I probably I drink more than I should because I because I can because it doesn't affect weight and a uh, couple of kids. At home, doing this on the side. No, I, in my head at the moment, this is. I'm thinking I don't have time to exercise. Is that just a piss poor excuse? Like, like yes. there's yeah. always I'll, a way I'll be, to. I'll be hard with you and say, yep, yeah, 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 yeah sure. like, It's it's uh, yeah, it's uh, again you you manage it. I uh, know, and, and I take my head off to a lot of people. I know, um, you know, groups. <laughs> my, my my older son Fraser is one of them. He gets up at two thirty in the morning and goes and goes to the gym. Yeah. Um, because he's. He, it's got to have breakfast at four thirty or whatever, but but um, yeah, it blows me away that uh, that people you, you know you can go into the gym at on site at two o'clock in the morning and uh, it's bloody full. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people in there, yeah. which I reckon is great because those people are uh, trying to manage them, you know, managing it. They're not doing the oh, I'm not getting up at two. I'm, I'm you know they're asleep, but but uh, but yeah, it's I think you know you're only you're only letting yourself down. Um, so if you make time, it's like myself, it's, I was the same. I've got a routine. I get up at five o'clock every morning and I, I exercise when I go and do my boot camp uh, between six and seven. That's my exercise time. I, you know, I, I go down to a, a cafe down the road here um, and, and catch up with a, a group of my mates that we meet every sort of morning and talk a bit of bullshit and talk a few shares, tips, and you know, try and solve the problems of the world and have a, <laughs> have a coffee. Um, and go home again, have a shower, and you know, Quarter past eight, I might be driving driving down the um, West Coast Highway, heading out to the office. But I, but I, I do that, and as I'm driving down, uh, I have to say that I, I often say to myself, "How? What else? What, what else would I have wanted to do? Um, you know, before eight o'clock in the morning, yeah. uh, I've done this, this, and this, or I could have been stayed in bed and slept. Um, uh, so." It's all, it's all up to you, isn't it? You know, the- Have you got to, and you've got to come up with the idea yourself for it to fully be planted. I, I find is that is that like because that's the thing. Like, yeah, everyone can tell you 
you got to do this. Lots like telling someone to quit smoking. Mm. Till I come up with the idea with myself to quit, it wasn't. It's just trying, it's trying to get people around you to promote you to get to that stage a bit quicker. I think. Well, I mean, I get a lot of people sort of saying, "Well, shit, you're looking pretty fit and uh, doing this and doing that." Well, so well, hey, <coughs> nothing's stopping you. Mm. Nothing's stopping you. And what says shit me? Oh, I'm going to the old gunners. You know, that's what sort of shits me. I suppose people are going to. Oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Well, Talkers, not stop, doors. Yeah, mm. stop talking about it and just bloody do it. You know, if you want to yeah. get fit, you know, want to do this and do that, well, bloody go and do it. That's yeah. what you because it's, yeah, you've you got to do it yourself. Eh? It's it's a mindset. It's just making the decision to do it. I mean, if you're in Jumbo, you still you work hard, but you you still got time to exercise. I know I've got a cousin who, who will run 13, 15 Ks, you know, before night shift. And, and get on the He's jumbo. a different breed, that fella. I know who you're talking about too. He's got some, I don't know what he's fueled with. He's, and he hasn't. I remember him general, at, at Paulson's. He was, uh, he'd go to the gym morning before shift and after shift and train. And that was, and that was tough digging down there. Um, unbelievable. Yeah, he's oh, yeah, no, machine. I, yeah. But all, and, uh, he's, yeah, he's human like all of us. There's no, there's no excuse anyone can't do that. Yeah. Like, I don't think anyone can bloody do that. But, but yeah. it's, um, it's a mindset and, you know, that's his mindset. And there can, can be other people's mindset. You don't have to push it to that extreme, but you, there's, there's always time to exercise. It doesn't have to be an hour. Yeah. You can just get in. You don't have to do weights. You can just get in and make your own stuff up. There's plenty of stuff you can learn on YouTube about what to do. Mm. I've yeah. gone, I've, uh, I've done things that I've never done before and, and, I, and I think – I think once you start talking, and it's probably one of the hardest issues to talk about um, to to you know around a, a group of people in the coffee that some of you don't know that well and, and open up. Um, but but I, what I found is that now I can talk about that. Um, I also there's a, a human excellence group that, that meet every morning here at Hillary's. Um, they uh, Monday and, and, and Friday either or Monday and Wednesday they do meditation first and. And then they um, they all go and run and jump off the, the jetty. And that's that's three hundred sixty five days of the year. You know, yeah. I think the first day I started was fifth uh, of June. Oh yeah, and it was like <laughs> bloody your luck. It was about four degrees. And <laughs> yeah, I thought, like, what the bloody? And it was the mate that talked me, and I said, I'll I'll start on Thursday. And it just so happened that Thursday was probably the coldest day of the, the coldest yeah. day of the year. But um, but you know, they jump into the into the water. Uh, go well. Why why would you get out of a, out of a warm bed and go and do that? Well. You know, and I've learned it's, it's about building resilience. You yeah, know, exactly. like doing, putting your body outside your comfort zone. Um, could could I do meditation when I first started? It took me probably six weeks, I reckon, to, to actually learn how to, to meditate. And I used to go home and say to my wife, like, this is shit. I can't, I can't get my brain to unload enough to do it. But I persisted. It took me six weeks. Yep. And, and, and now I... I can put myself into a bit of a med- well, not 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 great at it, but I can put myself into a bit of a meditated state. And when you can, shit, how how good do you feel? And people don't understand it either because it's quite hard to do. But if you can do it, it's you can. You know, we lay on the beach and do it, and I can hear a bloody car coming to the top of Hepburn. It's two kilometres away. I can hear a bloody seagull out at sea quack. And when you just completely you know, get yourself zoned out. Um, so, and and that group that meet every morning. Um, uh, just for example, last last Christmas morning, there was 118 people there at, at six o'clock in the morning on Christmas morning. Christmas morning, Christmas yeah, morning. Right, yeah. And but they we, we get together, um, and no one they don't shake hands. And I know this is COVID and we're not supposed to be doing, but everyone gives each other a hug. Um, it's just a, a quick hug, and they say how are you. And and the the policy that's there is that you've got to be truthful. If you're not well, you you, you, you say something. Um, so. So that took me to, you know, to would I have before that thought that I'd go to a, uh, a group of people I didn't know and give them a hug and, and I'd go, well, like, bugger off, it's not me, but, but I, I can openly do it and I go and have my coffee and as much as someone wants to give me the shit, I said, well, stuff you. I don't give a shit what you think that I do. So it's helped me, it's helped me also get over what people think um, because it works for me and I feel good about it and, and I've realised that's the main thing. So... Doing what makes you feel good, um, you should you should do it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and 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 a lot of that is, is as I say, in the community, this, this community spirit and and uh, helping people and being a part of things is it uh, gives you well, it gives me joy, um, and and that's what makes you happy. And being happy is what hopefully what life's a big big part of what life's about, you know. Yes, yeah, so there's two good points there, Roscoe. Is is yeah, being being 
um, belonging to a group is, is, you know, it's good for us. We're you know, genetic, genetically made up to actually, you know, belong to groups. That's why there's so many clubs around. But also starting the day doing something that you actually don't want to do, like jumping in cold water. Yeah. yeah it sets, it yeah. sets you up for a good day. Yeah. yeah. And it's amazing. Oh, I'll just, without, but I'll touch on it because it, it, it's, it's been such inspiration to me. Um, I've had a couple of times I've gone down there. I remember one morning specifically, there was a lady and a, a young fella that, he was a, a young pommy fella that um, couldn't swim. Neither of them can swim. But, but they wanted to, to jump off the jetty, but they couldn't swim. Um, so, so I actually came over here and to the boat and grabbed a couple of life jackets. Oh, and, right. Oh, yeah, and yeah. I took them back and, and they were shitting them. Like this young fellow was shitting them, but he said, I want to do it. I want to do it. You know? So we put, you know, when I say young fellow, 18, 19. Um, so we put these life jackets on it and everyone was sort of, you know, saying, you can do it, you can do it. And so we all held these, these two people's hand and jumped, jumped in off the, off the jetty um, into the water. And, you know, the, the power that that had, um, because uh, when they hit the water, they obviously shit themselves. But but when they got out, they were just buzzing. You know, it was was such a, a delight, and it was so so good that um, to be a part of you know, helping helping someone sort of achieve those sort of things. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, it's yeah, it just opened my eyes up to to a lot of things. And, and I went and jumped off bloody QV one a couple of weekends ago for for charity. Uh, um, you know. Um, do it in the nut or bloody that would be that would have raised a bit of money. Yeah, it was my yeah. birthday suit. And we, um, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and we actually did it was my boot camp group. Yeah, well, yeah. That was an initiative from them because we got a couple of uh, women there that have autistic children who we've sort of met and sort of seen the pressure that um, now one in particular comes down each morning and she's really a bit of a pain in the ass, but she can she's she's great fun, but she can be a, because she's quite a big girl and she doesn't really do the ex- exercises. But, but we realise that's her getaway for that hour. So yeah. you can get away and come and join us. So so we'll put up with it, which is great. Uh, we we raised money for Autism West and and um and then and I had a group of them come out on, on this boat the, the night before just so that we they could give us a presentation. That gave me a completely new understanding of, of autism, which I didn't realise and, and so there's sort of all these different things out there that um you know, you go looking, you know, we are all pretty blessed to be up, being able to, I know, you know, sitting here and being able to talk about things um, you know, others have got yep. a lot more problems in their lives. You know, yep. but. It's going to be uh first of many yarns, I reckon, this, like, hopefully a bit of a bit of a trend, it'd be good if we could keep it going. Because, um, you know, some people probably just need to, need a refresher every now and then with these sort of chats like it's good to do like all good to do a one-off but if you just leave it at that at all everyone just it gets ever people will probably feel like they get forgotten about a bit so yeah it's uh it's keeping it regular isn't it that'll be the big thing about it yeah and um getting everyone involved in the mining industry because they like it's as you said mining's the thing that pulls you out, pulls people out of it like it's the greatest like take mining away from my life i'm completely fucked i wouldn't have this yeah and then it's um uh, just being able to have a week and a week straight with my family every fortnight, just what a what a fucking amazing industry. Yeah, what yeah. it does for family. Uh tough, like tough being away. Like you cannot get any tougher than going away from the kids for a week. But how many people get the opportunity to have six days straight with them every fortnight? It's um, I love yeah. it. Yeah, there's been hundreds of miners been on this boat. Moonshadow's got a bit of a bit of yeah. a reputation. That's something that I've done for years. Yeah. Taking crews, taking crews out, and it's <laughs> it's not about you know Roscoe showing his big boat off or being a smart ass. It's a, I get so much joy out of seeing people having a good time, yeah. uh, and particularly our employees. Um, it's if it's something if it's special to them, which for most people it is. Um, that's great. That's awesome. That's what it's all about. So, to me, and, um, yeah. So. It's about sticking together and doing things together and yeah. being, a, being a part of it, but, uh, which is a hard thing for, I think, um, I'm going to say 60 next year and then getting to the end of my career and, and uh, one of the hardest things I think of every, or for all of us of, of leaving the mining industry, not that I'm doing that, but if, is is uh, yeah, is that comrades here and that, that uh, people, people in mining are, are really, I believe, are special. Um and yet, you know, we're here talking about so many issues that are, well, particularly mental health is a big issue within it. But um, it is a good, it's a great industry. It's been, been yeah, talk, so I good agree. For all of us. And this, yeah, uh, but this is this applies. To, hopefully, this will help people that aren't in mining as well. 
yeah. mental health yeah. is it's oh, um it's it's, 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 it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's, uh, it's everywhere. Sure. So if we can we can spread it beyond mining and yeah, no, for just sure. just use use mining as the base of it, it'd be fucking fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Yes. No, too easy. Oh, that's been awesome, lad. Thank, thanks yeah. so much for opening up yeah. everything. Um thanks to you, Matty. Take some, no, no take some balls you. on 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 your end to actually come and uh people to make themselves vulnerable on uh on YouTube especially. And uh it's uh it's a real big thing and we really appreciate it and thanks for saying thanks for making it happen. Yeah, thanks, mate. No, and just thanks, mate. I suppose but from, from both of us, mate, it's uh yeah, um speak up, stand up, um please, you know, uh, help, you know, help help us help you. This, uh, the, you know, um yeah, you've got to do it. You know, we, we wanna help you. Um people like us wanna help you, but You've got to help yourself, and that's the hardest thing that you need to understand is that that only you can do it. Not, well, yeah, it is really only, isn't it? This point, the starting point is you making, making that decision. step, making that decision yep. to, to do it. Um, that's probably the hardest thing, and, and then once we can get you in a, or you're in a network that can help you, well, stick with it and, and, um, and yeah, help yourself. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, and, and when, you, when you're saying, like, help, like take the step, that's not a. You go. Where's your best point of contact? Where would you say for people to go? Just to like, just to take the first step. Where Where would you say to go to? Doctor. No, um, well, mine, on site. Like, what would you What would you recommend? Well, for mine, and I'll let you go next. But mine is probably the person that you're comfortable with. So someone that you're comfortable to talk to, um, um, and and then you know that person hopefully it might not be might not be the person that's going to solve your problem or, or but but certainly um <coughs> once you've um once you've asked one person once you've actually made that break of actually getting something out um hopefully that person can put you in the right direction but but once you've sort of asked one i think you'll find you can actually start to talk about it a little bit more and and another thing that from the other side i'll ask people that if somebody does come to you and ask for that help you know please don't Please don't be negative on them. You know, please don't knock them back and say, "Oh, I've got enough shit on myself." Just say, "Hey, I'll, you know, I can't help you, but I'll, but I'll point you in the right direction, or I'll talk to somebody that, that might be able to." You know, so yeah. So yeah, it, I, exactly. I think it's going to be different for everybody. It's just the, the first, the first point of call is uh, the person that you're most comfortable with. Just having a chat about it, uh, then it's going to get easier for the second person, and hopefully, that first person will be able to, to guide you in, in a in a direction. If you don't already know how to how to get there, yeah, and that can that can be as simple as just your your wife or yeah, your husband. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Too yeah. easy. Well, uh, I reckon we might you might be both uh, and getting inundated with um, people getting in touch after this. Uh, it's because you um, and there's plenty more people like yourself out there, yeah, well, willing right. to help yep. and everything. So. Um, yeah, I won't give away your email addresses. You might get flooded a bit, but um, yeah, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that when people run into you, they'll know that you um, you're both two two good blokes that are willing to talk about it if people need it. So yeah, yeah no, guess if you if you run Thanks, into mate. Bud, if you run into Roscoe on Hillary's boat, Arbor, hit him up. So, <laughs> <laughs> go jump in the water with him one morning. <laughs> no, good on you, Dan. Thanks, Thanks very much, good on you, mate. mate. Good on you, mate. Good on you. Easy. Thank you.